This morning we're going to, uh, to talk about forgiveness and one of the crucial aspects of, of forgiveness as A Course in Miracles teaches us. Uh, one of the lines I, uh, I so, so frequently quote uh, comes from the workbook and the page What is Forgiveness in Part 2 that says forgiveness is still and quietly does nothing. It merely looks and waits and judges not. And the aspect of forgiveness I want to focus on this morning is the looking. I mean, that's the key to the whole thing. Over and over again in the Course, Jesus is telling us that we have to look with Him. We have to look with the Holy Spirit. We have to, we have to bring our, our, our illusions to the Holy Spirit's truth. We have to bring the darkness of our guilt and our anger to, to Jesus, a light-filled love and, uh, and peace. That we always have to look at the ego with Him, uh, and that's how, how we let it go. Uh, the opening to the dynamics of the ego in chapter 11 is, is probably uh, the clearest statement, I think, in, in all the Course, of this whole process of looking with Jesus and what it means to ask Jesus for help. Uh, and what we're really talking about is a way of breaking or dissolving the identification our minds have made with our bodies. Uh, very, very often when, when, when we talk about how we have to look and we have to realize that we are minds and not bodies, that uh, Jesus takes us on a journey from the mindless to the mindful, uh, people will say, well, I don't know I have a mind. I don't know how, how to do this. Uh, well, here's how you do it. And you don't even have to consciously know you have a mind. You don't even have to intellectually understand that you have a mind and that ego strategy is to keep us all in a perpetual state of mindlessness. All you have to do is be willing to look, and you don't even have to do this with Jesus on a conscious level. All you have to do is be able to step back and look at what your ego is doing. That's all. You look at what your ego is doing without judgment. Remember again, forgiveness is still and quietly does nothing. It does nothing behaviorally. It merely looks and waits patiently, which means it waits for our fear to abate sufficiently that we could truly accept that we are minds, and judges not. The whole idea of forgiveness is to look at the ego through our right minds, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit being the Course's primary symbols of our right minds, but you can use any other symbol that you feel comfortable with, or no symbol as long as the process is looking at your ego without judgment. And what is it that we look at? We look at the fact that how we make up one problem after another after another to distract us from what the real problem is. Uh, as Lessons 79 and 80 say in the workbook, there's only one problem, which is the belief in separation, and there's only one answer, which is the acceptance of the atonement or choosing the Holy Spirit's principle that the separation never happened. One problem, separation. One problem, atonement. Uh, one solution, atonement. One problem, the ego. The one solution, the Holy Spirit. Which really means the one problem is that our minds have chosen the ego and the one solution is our minds correcting its mistake and choosing the Holy Spirit or Jesus as its teacher. That's it. So whenever we are tempted to be upset by anything, concerned about anything, wake up in the middle of the night obsessing about something, something that happened the day before or that we think is going to happen today. Whenever we, we are obsessed with our bodies, our bodily pains or our bodily pleasures, and these become the absolute focus of our life, we should realize I'm never upset for the reason I think. That's what looking with Jesus means. It means stepping back and realizing the problem that I have, I have made real for myself and I experience as being outside of me is not the problem at all. So I watch myself get upset, knowing on some level that I'm literally upset over nothing. Right, now, now, this of course is based on the underlying metaphysics of the Course uh, that tells us that, that there's no world, literally. It's a projection of a thought in the mind, and the thought that it's a projection of doesn't even exist since we're not separate from our source. One doesn't even have to understand that or even bring that into awareness to understand that I'm never upset for the reason I think. Because we all would recognize that if we could feel this love within us, if we could feel this love whether we identify it as being God's love, Jesus' love, the Holy Spirit's love, or just love in general, and we could feel that deep abiding peace, nothing that goes on outside us could bother us. Nothing could take away that love and that peace. So looking means how I give the power of my mind to choose love, I give that power to something or someone that's external, an object, a person, a circumstance, an event. I give that power to something outside of me to take the love and peace of God away from me. And that is simply not true. 
So looking with Jesus, the heart of, of forgiveness, looking with Jesus means to step back and recognize what I've done, not because I'm bad, not because I'm evil, not because I'm stupid, but because I became afraid of the love that's in my right mind. Because I know somewhere inside of me, in the presence of that love, my special, unique, independent self that I call by my name would dissolve into nothingness. To forestall that, I leave my mind entirely, I make up a body, I go into the world, and I distract myself continuously by all the problems and circumstances that I believe are external and demand my attention. That, that is just not true. So once again, looking is recognizing what the ego strategy is and say, I'm never upset for the reason I think. I'm still, I'm quiet, and I look at my ego without judgment. That's the heart of A Course in Miracles, and that's the way that we return home. <laughs>